the world happens in post. It used to be we'll fix it in post. Now it's we're making. We're it making in it post in post. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, my continuity has all been off. My position is make things betterer, guy. I'll make you feel better. When we first talked about resurrecting the show, I, it was like getting a, a phone call from a, your high school principal saying, please come back to uh, high school. You didn't pass grade 12. No! In my 40 plus years in this business, I've never done anything like this. Nobody has. <laughs> the pacing is faster. Car evasive maneuvers. A lot of tightening up of, uh, of storylines. You know, it's a combination of old-fashioned editing and, and the newest in CGI technology. What we're doing with Star Hunter is uh, taking a series that was shot back, uh, second season back in uh, 2003, taking effects that are from an era back then and upgrading them to 2017. You know, the beautiful thing about getting to clean up some work that you did 15 years ago, you get reaction from audience. And if there's a question about the story or maybe a, a, a lag in, in the episode, the writers now have an opportunity to refine that, to fix it. What surprised me about the process was how much I enjoyed the actual working with editors and shaping each episode into a, a much crisper and more dynamic oh, format. Surprising to me was how the episodes that I remember writing or rewriting in the first season were still strong after 17 years. And what made them strong was, was the human drama, family drama. It's sweet that you feel you have to keep motivating me. Really very sweet, actually. My name is Jeff, and I'm one of uh, four editors on Star Hunter. You wanna come in and play? Baby. What the hell are you doing, girl? The original editors for season two, I think their mandate was to stretch, whereas my mandate is to shrink. So somewhere in the middle, I think we're going to find the Goldilocks cut of these episodes. Yeah! Dr. Zelon, good of you to join us. My job around here, other than to make these guys laugh, is to write. Although, with an all hands on deck kind of situation, writing is almost a vacation. Oh, come on, give me a break. <laughs> Navigational damaged, but sustainable. In short, we're a mess. I don't get it. Where In first season, we had this brilliant actor by the name of Murray Melvin, who played Caravaggio. He wasn't the same uh, actor that played in the second season, and we now have the opportunity to conform the two, so we're, I'm off to London to reshoot Murray Melvin and put him into season two as uh, the character. So he'll be there across 44 episodes. Long range telemetry, I don't know what that word is. There you are, Percy. Answer me, Percy. Oh, crap. I'm Connor Fitzgerald, I'm the producer's assistant. So uh, my main role is to try to keep the producers in line. So I also set the dress code for the office, try to keep the place a little classy. I can't get that much money, not in 20 hours. Then your parents die. I remember when we were shooting, it was like such a, because nobody, every time something was gonna be done, the question was asked, can we do that? I did it. The screen I'm adding right now is actually one that's flickering on as Luke walks into the bridge to make everything seem a little bit more alive or making it so that things react to people in certain ways. The galley is, is often here, is, is, is the sort of symbolic heart like any family exactly. in, in the 20th century would is uh, they solve the problems around the kitchen table. I think I've been watching too much Dick Van Dyke show. <laughs> Everyone's working towards one vision, but we all have slightly different aspects to bring to it. Noel is very good at organizing all the different thoughts that come out of the creative heads, especially Phil. So when we've got things such as Phil saying that we need to make something a ghost ship or we need to make something a bit more alive in the background, I've got Noel to translate it for me and figure out how, we've, how we're getting things to work. And then I put it into production. Sci-fi aficionados are, tend to be uh, a little bit more discerning uh, when it comes to effects. They want to know that we put the effort out there and now we have. 
Pew. <clears throat> and I just do that line again because I had a froggy. You know, you almost got us all killed. Okay, so I'm evil. We've revisited shows before, but never something quite on the scope where it was a full, not only one season, but two seasons of episodes. One of the benefits, though, or one of the great things, I think, was that a lot of the team here was the original Star Hunter team. We were familiar with the show, and they were some of the original creators on it, so it was great that uh, they were still around. The frame on the top corner on the right side, and then when it gets to Mercury, it's like uh, dying down, it's cooler. If you wanted to have this sort of scary um, orange in frame, uh, then in this shot where the sun isn't there, we still put it as if it's bleeding off of the sun. When we did the effects in season one and season two, we were limited to how much time and money we had. Now we can go back and enhance some of these scenes. So for instance, on the bridge, where there are control panels that are a bit flat, we can now add buttons, flashing lights, bells and whistles, little holograms that are popping up. The challenge was taking existing models from 2000 and trying to optimize it for the new workflow to make rendering faster and meeting deadlines for the project. Any artistic challenge that you... Everything. See, that's what I'm saying. Don't ask me more than one question. Hey, I'm Rich. I'm uh, compositing After Effects and my job here is to add additional bling. You have no choice. It's not a secret, it was a, it was a pretty low budget and we were aiming pretty high with a very low budget. You know, most of acting, in my opinion, is imagination. And it's your ability as an actor to believe where you are. Imagination doesn't come like fall out of the sky like rain. It's based on memory, mm -hmm. you know? So it's remembering what the main story is mm -hmm. makes imagination much more fertile. I figure it's a combination of proximity and checking their eye line. One thing that's, that's great about, um, about working here is the fact that we have a lot of freedom to sort of like just experiment and play around with ideas. And something that you just thought was just gonna be like a test, a try, that you didn't really think was gonna work out too well, just ends up being something that you just can't live without. And, you know, working with a lot of the people here is like, that happens so much. Please no. don't go, please don't go. You mean everything you to me. You made your bed, and now you're gonna have to take a nap in it, sleep in it. You had some, some very strong ideas that sh showed their way into some of the scripts. The guy appears in the pyramid spaceship. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, and he says, I have the gift of insight. Another idiot gone. And I said, why not make that one of the benefits of the Divinity Cluster. Mm -hmm. And suddenly more and more people were showing up on the show mm -hmm. who had been activated by the Divinity yep. Cluster. Dr. Zelon, good of you to join us. Instead of just wild, crazy people, that the Divinity Cluster was influencing the solar system. Hyperspace sucks. Anyone? Is anyone receiving this transmission? On the surface of Mercury, we want to have a, a more uh, more of a look that emphasizes the, the heat that the the actors are experiencing when they're when they're going through this part of the story. Mercury Correctional One, come in, please. Just leave it. It's faster this way. Most of the time, when I'm color correcting on a lot of these shows, it's uh, it's color matching, um, setting a, sort of a mood, and uh, also uh, just emphasizing different parts of the story. We wanted to get a more rustier look to the to the ship, and uh, if you look at the original the original footage, it had a more more flatter, grayer look to it. So we've kind of just been working to enhance that rustiness, that that patina of the ship. Is there, with the, the passage of time and and looking at this cut in progress, are there? insights that are new to you about Dante's character? As an actor, I was thinking more about what is it going to be like being a bounty hunter at this point in history? And that was my preoccupation. What, you know, what kind of bad guys are there going to be out there? Mm -hmm. What will be their crimes? What will be involved in capturing them? Yeah. And now, 16 years later, he's more concerned with, with Percy, with humanity, than his individual drives, like there was a lot of revenge 
in Dante in 2000. I want to get those guys who killed my wife, kidnapped my son. I want to get the bad guys that are doing this. But now it seems like the orchard is going to be actually the super villain of season three, mm -hmm. certainly. Mm -hmm. are doing is we're taking the uh, the stems that were recorded that are mixed to the dialogue music and sound effects from uh, the original mixes which were done early 2000 and we're we're brightening them up we're sweetening them uh, we are taking them from stereo into 5.1 for uh, for delivery just a little bit more of an immersive uh, sound uh, product we're bringing up some of the sound effects to uh, maybe a little more today's world than it was early 2000s and um, and then we are uh, remixing all of these episodes. We've gone through, we've added ambience tracks, which allows us then to, to actually create more of a 5-1 spread. A number of different sound design elements have been added, a number of different tracks, and these added elements then are uh, mixed in to the original show that we've been supplied with the music. You don't knock? Not when I know the answer's gonna be bug off and die. I'm having the best time ever. Uh, Sex, Star Hunter, I would say. I have a cunning plan. The things that come out of the collaboration between, you know, so many creative people, it's like, it's, it's mind-blowing on a daily basis. It's the cut that we always wanted uh, in a format that is much more vibrant and vivid along with the uh, new special effects and I think it's actually bringing out the performances that might have been lost in the old uh, uh, technology. In fact, I'm seeing it now every day. It's weird how I've seen every one of these episodes, but in their new form, it's like watching a new show altogether. It's a kind of super painkiller. In 2000, if we could do then what we did now, mm -hmm. we would have run for 10 years. Shit. Absolutely. Well, we're having another opportunity now. That's why we're here. Yeah. Michael, thank you so much. Phil, great to see you. So, I mean, we've been waiting for this meeting for a long time, <laughs> Absolutely. Right? And, Absolutely. Uh, it's it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great year. It, 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 it will be. It will be. Thank you so much, and thank you guys. Star Hunter. Star Hunter. Well, you know, like, on the forums, all those guys who are like, oh my god, that can't happen because this... Okay, just one minute. Thanks. You know how like there's like those those guys on forums when they're always like, oh man, that can't happen because of this. That can't happen because of this. I'm that guy. My best skill, tummy bongos. This is some kind of raider joke. I'm not amused. <laughs>